Very special thanks to Lexus of Swindon for providing the vehicle in this review. I've linked to their website down in the description below. So if you are in that part of the country and you're looking for either a new or a used car, be sure to give them a look. And they are currently still doing test drives and video calls if you do want to discuss a vehicle. One of my favorite things when reviewing a car is when a vehicle can single-handedly change your opinion of it compared to your pre-existing ideas or opinions of it, and sometimes even beyond that, to the brand as a whole. Now, I've already liked and respected Lexus for quite some time. I really like a number of their cars, including the LS600H, and of course the ISF, and the obvious choice, the ever-popular LFA. This one for me was more middle ground. I've never disliked the LC500, but I certainly wouldn't put it as one of my favourite Lexus models either. That was until I drove one. And that is, as I said, one of my favourite things. When something can totally change your expectations, even just something as simple as the way it looks, before you even sit in the car or drive it, there are certain cars which they just sit differently. They have a different presence on the road. The proportions change compared to a photo or a video or even a video game compared to real life. When you see the actual form of a piece of art, which is what this car is in person, it changes everything. And one of my favorite things about this car has always actually been the design, but that is tenfold now that I've seen it and driven it in person because it's such a cool idea to have a car that still looks like a show car or a concept car that you can actually buy. There are so few cars that carry over more than anything the spirit of a concept car design to the street. So many of them get watered down, they have to make changes for safety reasons, production costs, the LC manages to still look like a concept car that you can actually buy. And this particular model, I would argue actually more than something like the obvious choice of the pure 5 litre V8, this one being the hybrid, it really ties into that even more. Because as cool as the V8 is, and don't get me wrong, it's a great car in its own right, and I do hope to review that one in future and certainly compare it to this, the fact that this is a hybrid, a very clever, very well engineered hybrid, I might add, it just adds to that concept car, that futuristic allure that the vehicle has. There are certain sports cars, certain GTs, if you will, 2 plus 2 or 2 seater, which kind of have a more contemporary feel. And then there are others which are more futuristic. This definitely leans in that way, but I also love that it keeps that underlying layer of classic vibe to it. And what I mean by that is, it doesn't look over the top in terms of futuristic. It's a car which I would describe as being somewhat ageless. It doesn't necessarily look like it's from any particular year. And to me, that's a cool thing because it means that a car can often age very well. If it looks too futuristic, it can kind of be over the top. If something looks too classic or too of its time, the 2000s for instance, then a car can sometimes not age as well. To me, the design of this one doesn't look like it's from any time. It just looks like a concept car, and that's cool. The larger wheels, the striking red paint, of course that stunning grille on the front, which is possibly my single favourite thing about the design, it all just looks great together. And to me, it's the kind of car that combines what you'd want from a more gentlemanly sports car, but with the more forward-thinking and definitely on-demand performance of something that's typically maybe more track-oriented, or even more rabid, you could say. Because the words rabid, or unforgiving, or track only, are not the kind of phrases that you would ever use with this car. And I think it's all the better for it. This is the kind of car that's not for somebody who plans to take it to Silverstone every weekend. It's the kind of car for somebody who wants to be in something that looks fantastic, has very well engineered, very clever technology, but that you can genuinely use on the road without having your teeth rattled out of your head because it's too uncomfortable, but also have a car that has all the creature comforts that you'd want, all the luxuries you'd want and all of the class that you'd expect from a Lexus, let's be honest, inside and out. And to me this car is just Lexus flexing their engineering muscles, because the way that the hybrid system works is very impressive. The car even has two transmissions, and the way that it works is it has a 3.5 litre V6 engine with two electric motors, purely rear wheel drive, which will certainly please some people. But it has, as I said, two transmissions working together, almost within one another. It has a four-speed automatic in conjunction with a CVT. 
which gives you in effect the equivalent of a 10 speed in terms of the way it works and that allows the torque of the electric motors and the more traditional approach of the v6 to work really well hand in hand and the curious thing is despite the fact that it doesn't have the raw old school power of the for instance 5 liter v8 which I'm not going to get into too much because, as I said, I hope to review that car at a future time. That one, though, has about 480 horses. This has 350, and that's the system total between electric and petrol. But here's the reason why I say it's well-engineered, especially when it comes to having both performance that would impress anyone, but also that's usable every day on the road, is because typically a sports car that has more technology packed into it, making it thereby heavier, as this one is. It's a 4,400 pound car, that's two tons, so it is hefty, for sure. With 350 horsepower total and about 370 pound-feet of torque, those numbers aren't bad, but 350 horsepower in a two-ton sports car with rear-wheel drive, so not even the all-wheel drive grip advantage, it could be a little bit under par, or even underwhelming, in terms of performance. Well, it isn't, because the 0-60 to time is 4.7 seconds. That's very impressive for a 350 horsepower car. Even if this weighed half a ton less, that would still be impressive. The fact that it also weighs two tons is remarkable. Then, when you factor in that this model does 10 miles per gallon more than the V8 version in all circumstances, city, highway, performance driving, always at least 10 miles per gallon more, well, that's a pretty tangible difference. Now, as I've alluded to before, even in some of my other reviews, when you buy a car like this, it's not exactly about saving fuel money, because if you were going to purely do that, you'd probably buy a Nissan Leaf or a Toyota Prius. This is not a car to save fuel money with. It's a car that blends the best of what we already have, a very well-engineered V6 in this case, with the next thing the electric motors, the hybrid technology, and when you put them together, it really shows that you don't have to choose. If this car was fully electric, I believe it probably would not sell as well, because there are still people who want that old school vibe and the older feel. And I think that having a hybrid in this case was a great choice. You already have the V8 for people who want the more traditional approach. A fully electric car would sell, but it'd be very heavy, the range would be limited, you'd still have to charge it up for a long time instead of just filling it up with fuel. There are a number of drawbacks to that, let's be honest. This really does combine the best of both worlds. But what then about using it in the real world? Because that is one of the common things that I like to do in my reviews. Take these vehicles which are somewhat abstract to many of us, something which you'll drive in a video game or watch on Top Gear or you know listen to a review for or look at photos of in a magazine, and then actually feel how they perform in real life at normal speeds on less than stellar roads here in the UK. So how does the car fare? Well, that is another one of the most deeply impressive things about it to me because the way it copes with our roads is very impressive as well. The way the car feels is actually hand in hand related to the proportions. It's large enough to look impressive, but it doesn't feel oversized. There was not a single time in the time that I drove this car where I felt like I was cramped or that I was kind of breathing in to get past traffic. It never felt that way. But at the same time, as you can see from the interior shots, I'm not cramped in the car either. The headroom is good. The width room is, I would describe as snug for me. And I don't mean that as a, a polite way of saying cramped by any stretch. I actually love a car that is form fitting, a vehicle which you almost wear rather than sit in, having this cockpit arrangement that kind of wraps around you, and it's a very popular design style to have these days more than ever. To me, this car gets that very right. Now, another thing which you might not know, in fact, a lot of people probably don't know this, is it's actually a four-seater. Now, the rear seats don't have a huge amount of space, but it does tie into that element of practicality which the car, you could argue, doesn't necessarily need, but the fact that Lexus chose to include it impresses me. Because if you can have a car which is as fast, as well engineered, as stunning looking as this is, but then that you can genuinely use on the road, even every day if you wanted to, because yes, you could use this every day, 
that just makes me like the car even more and respect Lexus even more. The trunk space is not exactly going to rival something like an estate or an SUV, of course, but it's not bad at all for what it is. The rear seats are more than capable for smaller kids if you have to take your kids in the car. You know, try and avoid it if you can, just enjoy the car on your own, but you know, do what you have to do. And in terms of interior design, it easily matches how classy the outside looks. And I know that sounds like a small thing, but to me, and this is something which I've always felt, the interior design of a car, not just the components used or the quality of the leather or something like that, but even the more abstract style and the class and the charisma, it's a very important thing because as stunning as the outside of a car is, you don't drive it from the outside. You're in the driver's seat. So what's the point in having everyone else look at your car and like it when you don't enjoy being inside it? To me, that is very important. This car's interior is stunning. Now, for me personally, I would probably choose a brighter colour, maybe like a tan, and it does look stunning in tan as well. I might even include an image of that in the video, but this looked great as well. It's classy. I love the kind of almost baby Lexus LFA vibe which this car gives off both inside and out. I love the heads-up display. I love the instrument cluster. It's got some touchscreen elements, and I really love the transmission control in this car as well. You do have flappy paddles, fairly obviously, and you can drive it in full auto if you choose to, but just the clunk of the selector, the way you click it over for neutral, click it over and up for reverse, over and down for drive, it just gives it almost like this semi-automatic vibe, which feels very fun to use. Everything in the car, speaking of the clunk of that selector, also has a feeling of quality. The way the door shuts, the way the seat moves, the lack of sound. There's no creaking <laughs> in this car, even though it's so quiet at lower speeds when you're running in full EV. Now, of course, the biggest question is should you buy this or just go for the V8? Because the difference in price is fairly negligible, both used and new. Well, the answer to that question, to me at least, is actually a lot more simple than you might think. A lot of people will try and weigh up the pros and cons of the power versus the batteries versus this versus that. To me, it's not complicated at all. The only question that you need to answer is which one do you like the idea of? Because whichever one you like the idea of, you'll probably enjoy more to drive. Because design-wise, they both offer the same. In terms of performance, the way they deliver it is totally different, so whichever you prefer, you will just like more. Forget the advantage in fuel economy, forget the fuel savings, because yes, it's technically true, but it also won't matter too much on a day-to-day -day basis. As the facts fall, the hybrid is more efficient. The V8 is faster. Those are the facts. The only thing you need to decide is which way do you prefer. And of course, test drive one, and then you'll know for sure. So thank you once again to Lexus of Swindon. As I said, check out the website down below where you can still see this vehicle as well. And until next time, I'll see you then. But if you are new to the channel and you want to check out my other car reviews, be sure to click here on screen for my car and motorcycle reviews. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.